In my opinion, Facebook ads are the best way to market your music right now. But one of the biggest questions and comments I get in a lot of the videos I do showing you how to do Facebook ads is people saying like, Andrew, I don't have that much money to put towards marketing my music. I see you spent like $400 promoting that single. I can't do that. I have like $100. So in this video, I'm gonna show you how I ran a $100 Facebook ad campaign to get these results. I'm gonna show you all the Spotify for artists data and I'm gonna show you exactly how to do the ad yourself. But first, let me show you the history or explain the history behind how this came to be. A couple months ago on my channel, I wanted to do something fun. So I got one of my singles that I just released and I announced a remix contest where the grand prize was a $100 Facebook ad campaign managed and paid for by myself. And it was a super fun time and there were a bunch of other prizes involved. And so this prize, this song that I promoted was the grand prize winner. He had a single that was coming out. He wanted me to wait until I came out to do his campaign and we got some fantastic results. So the artist in question is known as Aharak and he, he makes some awesome music doing kind of like dead mouse vibe electronic music and prior to this he was only getting a handful of streams or listeners per day. Like essentially he had almost no activity on his Spotify profile. And you can see up here that the, the growth from this month to last month is 137,000% increase. So if we go to the song that we actually ran the ads for called Miracle, well actually I'll go back here. It's only been a little more than a week since the song came out, a week and a half. The song's gotten 12 and a half thousand streams, 8,200 listeners and 900 saves. If we open up the song, you can see how the story played out. Basically, we launched the song here. We ran Facebook ads at a respectable, I think, $15, $20 a day budget for the first week. The song did so well that it got put on release radar. And if we look in the playlist here, you can see 10,000 of those streams are from release radar. And then he's been riding that wave since. And I'd be willing to bet that over the next couple of weeks, he's going to be on Discover Weekly as well. He's not on it yet, but he is on 128 user playlist. No playlist pitching just Facebook ads. <laughs> and to show you a little bit more of the data, you can see 81% of the streams are coming from Spotify algorithmic playlists, namely Release Radar. 7% of the streams come from essentially first time people going to the song in his profile, and 11% of the streams are from people listening again in their own playlist and in their own library. So that's essentially repeat listeners. In terms of the demographic, this is the spread that we got. Pretty good first world countries like Germany. Mexico is kind of not known as like a, a main big country that you push for, but United States pretty high, Canada pretty high, Poland, France, Spain, nothing like weird looking. We're not seeing like 90% of traffic from India or some random African country, right? It's all pretty nicely spread out. So if we take a look at his actual profile here, you can see that essentially all of his traffic is for that song. There is some spillover effect to other songs, but it's, it's somewhat minimal. Um, but we can look at the follower stats. So in addition to that $100 getting him that insane result on that song, it also gained him 33 followers in, in like a week and a half, which is a pretty good result considering that the followers are essentially just a side effect of the action. We weren't trying to grow followers. We were trying to get the song to spike in algorithmic playlists, which it did. The followers, completely a side effect. So now let's take a dive into the Facebook ad so you can see how this all works. So this is what Facebook ads look like. Uh, looks like I filtered my campaign, so it's just showing this campaign. I have a ton of campaigns going, and it's a nightmare to look at. You can see here, so far, we spent $99.75. Um, this is just, just as close as I could get it. It's going to spend a couple more dollars today, and then I'll stop it. But we've gotten 664 results. We've reached 100,000 people and gotten 214,000 impressions. And the grand result ended up being an average of $0.15 cents per person that went to the song on Spotify. Now, the way that I set up my campaigns is I use the conversion objective and I send people to what's called a landing page. I use a hyped it smart link landing page, which I'll show you on screen uh, right over there. And basically it just sends people and gives them a, a list of select options to go to. We're really focusing on Spotify. But the reason we do that is so we can track all of those objectives. If you use the link click campaign, a lot of times people won't get to Spotify and you can see more info on why that's the case in this video, I'll link right there. But we use the conversion campaign for the reasons in that video. So the way the campaign's set up, we do the conversion event and then we split into three different ad sets based on artist related artist targeting. As I mentioned, the song is very dead mousy. And before we ran this campaign, I asked our Harak, which by the way, he's like a 16 year old producer from France, which is it's just awesome that he's so young and making such great music. 
but I asked him some artists, and then I did my own research and get some more artists. So Dead Mouse, I'll open up this ad so you can see roughly how things are set up. And so this is just kind of cookie cutter stuff. You pick your conversion event, which is it's a complex subject, but at the end, I'll link you to some videos that give more context and how that works. The most important aspect of this is the targeting, which is what I want to focus on. So I'm targeting every single Spotify country with the exception of India, because India tends to give such cheap results that it'll consume the entire budget of our campaign. So I exclude India, but aside from that, I'm targeting the entire list of Spotify countries. And I do some kind of rough estimates, like I say, people that are 15 to 44, probably the target demographic for this audience. And I just do all genders. But when it comes to the detailed targeting, I split things up between Spotify, so that way everyone that clicks the ad should have Spotify. And then I do and also match. This is what's known as the narrow further option. You must also be interested in Dead Mouse, who is an electronic artist, in case you're not familiar with him. And that's really it in terms of the targeting. Now there's an important split between what I've taught in the past that I'm starting to do now that I want to point out here. I used to only target the story placements, Facebook stories, Instagram stories, and Messenger stories. But recently a subscriber pointed out to me that he duplicated what I teach, except he turned on some of these extra feed placements and dropped his cost significantly. So that's what I've been doing recently. I've turned on Facebook news feed, video feeds in a right column, and sometimes I'll also turn on Instagram feed and Instagram explore, um, just kind of depending on, on the song and how much work I feel like doing when setting up the campaign. And from there, that's how the ad sets are done. Now, the only difference between these, all, these three different ad sets is that in this one I targeted Zomboy, in this one I targeted Skrillex. And basically what this does is, since we're turning on what's called campaign budget optimization, Facebook is going to automatically allocate budget based on what gets us the cheapest results that they can find. So you can see that Dead Mouse and Zomboy, 15 cents per conversion, and Skrillex ended up being more than twice as expensive, so it couldn't find many results, and I eventually just turned it off so that it wouldn't even try to put more budget behind it. So one question I get a lot is, what do I put in the ad? So I'll put the ad on screen right now. And while Aharak gave me that video, I think him or his friend made it, I do a similar type of video, and I actually made a video showing you how I make just a very simple artwork video that's that's more than a, just a still piece of artwork. And you can see how to do that right there. But that's all the video is. It's very simple. There's not, nothing fancy. It's not a music video. It's just a super simple thing that's, here's a sample of the song. Check it out. And just to show you there's nothing spooky going on in the actual ad itself, uh, you can see here I, I used my company, Generic Studios, as the account to run the ads on. And I just use the same placement on all the feeds. If, if you use Instagram, you have to customize the placement. It's a little more work, but that's that's all I did. I just use that here. And let me mute this so it doesn't start playing. Um, in terms of the link, I'm just using this simple hyped it thing that I showed you earlier. And sometimes in my own campaigns, I'll put Apple Music on, but with such a small budget, I wanted to focus all of my energy on Spotify, which is why Spotify is the only button on this page. So you might be thinking, why was this so effective? You only got 664 people to actually go over to Spotify. So how did that work out? And the reason it works out, and I've said this time and time again, but if you have quality data on your Spotify, high save rates, high repeat listen rates, high amounts of people adding the song to your YouTube playlist, and a good amount of people following the artist's profile, Spotify picks up on all that great data and says, this must be a great song. The artist was very small before this. They put out the song and it blew up. It must be good. So we're going to put it on release radar. We're going to put it on Discover Weekly, and we're going to show it to more people to keep them on Spotify. We're going to give the music they want to hear. And all of that stuff ends up being that for just this small amount of investment, you get this massive spike that's probably going to continue for weeks or months on end, resulting in an overall profitable music marketing campaign. So I know that a lot of people think this Facebook ad stuff is confusing, but a lot of people just from watching my videos, of which you can check out more right here, have been able to pull off what I do almost immediately. But a lot of people haven't been able to replicate everything because they don't have the prior Facebook ads experience. So I've created a course that goes kind of from start to finish, explains everything along the way, and I've opened it up to 25 more seats. And the link's in the description if you're interested in that. Thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you next video.